So as we are gathered here today, I greet you in the God of the ages in His name. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with grace, mercy, and peace. Let us answer this greeting of the Lord by singing our first of five hymns. I think you can stand if you are able. As you are able, please stand and we will be singing our God, O oh God, our help, help in ages past. Unfortunately, if you're not with the singers at the open front door, we have to keep our masks on. But please do feel free to sing. saddened at the thought of war, of the soldiers who must fight, and all those who are killed. Today we remember their sacrifice with great sadness. We thank them for what they did for us. We also remember that they won for us a victory, and without their bravery these wars may have been lost, and our lives could have been so very different. Without the freedom we so much enjoy, we thank them for what they did for us. We are saddened at the thought of your suffering, that you too had to be a great hero and walk to Jerusalem, be arrested, tried and killed on that horrible cross. We thank you for what you did for us. We also remember that you won for us a victory, that on Easter morning you rose again and helped us to overcome our human nature so that we might rise again with you. We thank you for what you did for us. Amen.
Our next hymn is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Please note that we will be singing only three verses, verse 1, 2, and 5, for the sake of the singers who might not have the verses. Verse 1, 2, and 5, and John will be playing it through the first time. I, um, please remain seated, and the singers, feel free to stand when it's your turn to sing. Thank you. from Deuteronomy 4, verse 9 to 14. Only be careful and watch yourself closely, so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen, or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb. When he said to me, assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land that in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow and then write them on the two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and the laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing to the Jordan to possess. Let us stand as we are able to share in the singing of this age-old hymn of the peacemakers.
listen to the word of God. For the director of music of the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth, a song. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God bless this reading from his holy word. Allow me to share with you a poem that was written by young Ailey from, I'm just trying to remember whether that was Ailey or whether that was Ailey. I think I have the wrong photo at the wrong poem. <laughs> so one is Ailey and the other one is Eva. Like only a Celt could spell it, right? So please allow me to share with you a poem from each of these young girls from East Craig's primary school that they shared at the laying of the wreath. And then uh, Jessica will play the reveal for us, after which we will have two minutes of silence and the lighting of the candle, which purposefully is placed in the baptismal font which is a signal of future hope, and uh, normally linked to children and young families. We remember the people's heads sweeping low for a tragedy that happened long ago, for a sadness that happened twice. We remember the sacrifice. We remember the smell of death. The guns that took away their breath. When the alarm sounds, we run away. The shock that happened that day. We remember how the bombs land with no time even to raise a hand. The people that created the violence caused the world a minute of silence. So many families struck with heartbreak. How many years will the war take? They had to pay the ultimate price. We thank them for their sacrifice. Waiting and waiting, but they never came home. The longer it took, the more we felt alone. Where the soldiers passed, we feel grief to remember. We come and lay down our reads.
Thank you. Please be seated. Make me a channel of your peace where there is despair in life. Let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. These are some of the names of the fallen soldiers on the back wall and on the front wall we have two different sets of names. One is from the First World War and one is from the Second World War. Uh, these are to be seen at the uh, War Memorial at the old parish church uh, in Kostofen. I'm wondering whether some of you might have known some of these families. We have there a John Henry, a Captain John Hope, a Lieutenant Cameron Mitchell, a Corporal William Anderson, Sergeant John Scott, and then a whole list of privates. David Barry, John Dunlop, John Gerard. Now that's one set of names you can see there. And I'm always wondering, if you give your child a name, it is more often than not, especially in that generation, it, it would be linking your child to the past. Maybe a grandfather's name, maybe a father's name, maybe a mother or a grandmother's name. Uh, our daughter is called after, named after my wife, who has her mother's name, and it goes back a few generations, the name Christina being in the family. Our son was named after a historical figure, not the tennis player Andrew Murray, but the Presbyterian minister Andrew Murray, who led so many revivals in South Africa in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So that's where Murray gets his name from. It's a name that links him back to a, a Scottish and South African history that goes back more than a century. Now here we see another list of names. These were two of the representatives from I think it's Kostofen Primary that was there, whereas East Craig's Primary School had two girls there. Uh, there were a number of schools as representatives. Kostofen Primary had two boys there, and they came to lay the wreath. Now allow me to read some of those names. Their parents probably also linked it to a larger meaning, either in the present or in the past. And here we have names such as, it's now without surnames. This is the class nameless. It's, some of you might have seen it. It's fairly popular nowadays in P7 or in S6 for the final year students, pupils, to put their names on one clothing item that they all buy. This, these are, what are these called? Hoodies, I think. And this is class of 22. So there we have names like Grace, Chloe, Akash, Kaden, Abdirahman, Eamon, Elliot, Rhys, Leila, Zilal. 
slightly different than a hundred years ago and still the names of the young people. The names of local children living in Kestorfen. So when we put our name on something, it means we are part of, we are part of a larger group if we put our names with other names. If you have a look at the baptismal register in the hall, when next you are at um, Craig's Bank Sanctuary, when you go out heading towards the kitchen, uh, please have a look at the name list there. Some of your names are there. Some of your children's names are there. Um, sometimes nowadays when I'm called to a funeral, I sometimes go and have a look at where that name featured 60, 70 years ago. Our names mean so much to us. It holds promise for a future. It holds a memory of a past. But who still would know these names in a hundred years? These names that you see there, Grace and all the names there. And who would... Hmm. Who would still remember these names? Who, who knew these boys, these young men? Maybe those who had known them might also now have passed away. And then I, as a Christian, find it comforting when I recall the verse from the Bible that says, Your name is engraved in the palm of my hand. The God of creation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, says of his children, says of you and me, that your name is engraved in the palm of his hands. Now, who would engrave a name in the palm of his hands? And then I think of Jesus Christ on the cross and the nails that were driven through his hands, the blood that flowed and I'm well aware that my name, your name, the children of God's names are written in the palms of his hands. Then I'm also reminded of the verse in the Bible where St. Paul says, the Apostle Paul says, we are the body of Christ. We can share in the joy the miracles, the suffering, the longing, the comforting as the body of Christ. We are collectively embodying the compassion of God for the world that we find ourselves in. As a congregation, I find it inspirational and comforting that our motto, our value set is so much like what we sang here from the Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, where we say sadness and joy are both part of reality, of generations previously, of generations to come. But instead of shirking from the reality, instead of not acknowledging the reality of the joy and the pain that we find ourselves in. As Christians, we are called to share in the experience of the reality of darkness and light, of sadness and joy. And God sends us forth as a congregation, as a collective, as, as people who have been baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to share in the sadness and be bringers of joy, to share in people's darkest moments and to be bringers of light. Amen. We will now share in a prayer as Alison leads us and uh, we can share in our hearts with her. She leads us in our prayer of intercession.
Dear God, <clears throat> as one family, we reflect today on the horrors of the past that continue to haunt humanity and darken our world. Lord, where pain still overwhelms, bring healing. Where hearts are still breaking, bring comfort. Where peoples are still oppressed, bring liberation. Where communities are still victimised, bring justice. Where children are still brutalised, bring compassion. Where lives are still crushed, bring hope. Where evil is perpetrated, bring repentance. Where war still devastates, bring peace. But most of all, wherever a single voice cries out in the darkness, bring us to one another. In the name of the love you bear in your heart for all people, all nations, and all creation. Amen. Right, as we go forth from here, I send you forth with the blessing that may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guide your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. <laughs>